Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jackman Trades back here again with another video, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different type of thing, making a preset with Cortex Control on the Mac. Um, so all of the audio that you're going to hear is basically just recorded directly into my computer, over USB, into Logic, um, and what we're going to do is make a preset based on the song Loon by Periphery. I was actually kind of wrong about how amazing Cortex Control would actually be. I didn't really have too much of an expectation. I, generally speaking, always looked at the idea of having a desktop controller as kind of a unnecessary thing, especially when we're talking about something with as great of an interface as the Quad Cortex. The touchscreen, the rotary encoders, all of that stuff, I feel like really has made a pretty big impact in terms of how you use this thing. It makes it really easy to get started. There's really not anything that I would change about how the Quad Cortex works by itself. And I think that you can absolutely get away just using this. One of the things though that I really do like about having the desktop controller right now though is the fact that I don't have to be always bent over looking at my quad cortex since oftentimes it's not going to be sitting on a desk, it's going to be sitting on the floor. And you know, if you're trying to create a preset or something like that, even with the looper, it's like you still have to play something, let it loop, and then uh, go through and mess with all of the things on the ground and it can be kind of a bit of a pain. The great thing about the desktop controller though is that you can plug your quad cortex in directly, sit at your desk at a comfortable location, and just sort of mess around with things as you please. I think that's really, really great, and it's something that I wasn't exactly expecting, but I'm really happy that it works as well as it does. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. And one of the first things that I always like to do when I create my presets is take a looper, drag it all the way to the front of my signal chain, and then we'll basically just play something that uh, resembles what we're trying to actually go after. So I'm just going to disable all of these uh, blocks here. We're just going to pop open the looper and play the main riff that we're trying to emulate with the quad cortex. So as you guys can hear, it's not exactly perfect, but it's something that I've been working on. And what we're going to do basically here is just start off with picking ourselves an amplifier. So I'd already gone through and actually made this preset, but we're going to build it up just as if I hadn't been doing that originally. So here we have an amplifier and a cab block. So our cabinet block is going to be the 412CA traditional S. Uh, UK V30. So this is a pretty standard type of uh, cabinet setup that I like to go with. I like the sound of 212s and especially having the V30s, that's something that's pretty common in terms of metal guitar playing. Um, and even though the intro to Loon is a pretty chill type of vibe, um, I think that the V30s kind of give it a pretty nice warm tone. And then for the amplifier, I actually went with the Bogna Uber Clean. Uh, this is a amplifier that's relatively new. I think it came out a couple of core OS's ago, maybe like 1.5 or something. Um, but what's really, really nice about the way that this uh, interface works is that you can actually audition all of the amplifiers without ever switching. So, like, here we are on the Bogna Uber Clean. Let's see what the Bogna Vishnu 20th Clean sounds like. And so you can see that our Bogna Uber Clean is in green, and this uh, auditioned amplifier is blinking. We can actually change any of these parameters here without actually impacting the amplifier that we have selected. So that's really, really cool. If you're trying to go through and figure out what a good amplifier would be for this tone that you're going after, um, this really helps out quite a bit. But, 
Again, I think that this Bogna Uber Clean is probably the best one. I think that it sounds pretty close to what the record actually sounds like, so we're gonna go and move forward with that. All right, so the next thing that I really like to do is go and take a compressor and put it on the front. This will just kind of even our tone out a little bit, so if we hear it without the compressor, this is kind of what we have. It sounds okay, but again, it's not exactly perfect. Some of the notes are a little bit quiet, some of the notes are a little bit loud. But if we go here and add this guy in, And then again, if you don't like this compressor, you can actually go through and audition different ones. So like VCA comp stereo. This one's actually one that I like a little bit better than that uh, Chief CS3. So we're actually just going to click this one more time. That'll make it a uh, actual block in our signal chain. And so you hear that now we have that introduced. And on the record, I'm not entirely sure if there's a ton of reverb, but I feel like reverb is usually a pretty solid thing to have. So we're gonna throw in a plate lush. And you hear that this really expands our sound quite a bit. It gives us a little bit of a nicer uh, overall soundscape, fills us out a bit. And I like to keep the mix fairly low on this. Let's say like around 21%. And then decay, we'll also keep this fairly low. If you have it too high, it's gonna be sticking around too long. It'll sound a little bit weird. So we're gonna keep this one right around 20-ish uh, percent. So I think that that sounds pretty good. Um, the next thing that I wanna add in is delay, since delay is a pretty crucial part of this uh, song. So you hear that with the delay on there, you kind of get that doubling effect, which is what we're going after. Mix it really nice and dreamy. And mix, we're gonna leave at 50% feedback, 25% is generally okay. We could boost this up a little bit, maybe 35. Yeah, so 35% sounds pretty good to me. Um, high pass, low pass, we'll just leave those as they are. Ping pong, we don't really need ping pong delay right now, uh, but if you did want to turn it on, this is what it would sound like. You can hear it bounces between the left and right channels, um, but for this particular song, I don't think it's necessary. Sync note, we're going to leave it a quarter. Moderate, uh, I think that that's fine at 0.5 hertz. Mod depth, 40%, that's fine. You can hear that this is actually pretty solid. It sounds, I think, pretty close to what the actual record sounded like. But I think that one of the major things that we can do uh, is use EQ to actually help to shape our tone a little bit more and get us even closer to that sound by eliminating frequencies that we don't like or boosting frequencies that we do like. So we're going to add on the parametric 8 here. I like this since it gives us the most flexibility in terms of how many nodes that we can have on our EQ. Um, so here we go, we're just gonna continue our loop. And this is the EQ profile that I came up with. But we'll just start from scratch. So this is what we have as a starting point. If we go here to uh, one, I always like to have this as a high pass filter. If you have a high pass filter, it cuts out all of the super low frequencies, which could interfere with the drums or with the bass. Um, so you can sort of scan through this and see where you want to actually put this. Um, for me, I have it right around 36 hertz. I think that that's a pretty good point. And then I always like to put on the high end a low pass filter. So this will cut out all of the super high frequencies um, and any of those really unpleasant sounds that nobody really likes to hear. Again, you can sort of scan through and see where that low pass filter might work best, but for us, I think we're gonna put it somewhere around 8,000 hertz, I think is pretty solid. So now that we have our range set, now we can go through and start actually shaping our tone. So for this, we're going to go to the low end first and then work up through our mid range and up to our high end. So 
I like to use the peak here. Um, and one of the tricks that I always like to use when I'm actually doing EQ is to set the Q value really, really high to say like 10, boost the gain up, and then scan through the frequencies. And then if we hear a frequency that we don't particularly like so much, so let's say that it's right around here at 97 hertz, then you can kind of lower the Q value a little bit to make it less of a harsh modification. And then you can take the gain and you can reduce it by, let's just say, two decibels. Alright, so then that sort of smooths out our change, so that way it's less noticeable, but it also gets rid of those harsher frequencies that we don't really like. Now, let's go and work on some of the mid-range a bit, so, well, it's really like low mid-range. Um, so here for number three, again, we'll push that frequency uh, range of Q up to 10, push our gain all the way up. And yeah, right around here, 360-ish hertz. There's this kind of like low quackiness that I want to get rid of. And so again, we'll just drop this Q range down to about 4.64. And then we'll drop that frequency by about two decibels. And then we just do that for all of the frequencies that we want to modify here. Um, you can also use like a low shelf or a high shelf if you want to boost or lower a whole range of frequencies. So here I have a high shelf with a slight gain reduction uh, at 5200 hertz. So we also have a pretty low Q, so this is a very subtle type of modification. So that is basically the sound that I came up with for uh, something similar to Periphery's Loon uh, off of P3. If you guys haven't heard that song, definitely check it out. It's a really, really nice song. But I hope you guys liked this look at how we can actually use the desktop controller to shape sounds and create presets really nice and quickly. I think that this is actually a pretty game-changing feature for those of you guys who use the Quad Cortex. If you've had it from the very beginning like I have, uh, you know, I always enjoyed using the Quad Cortex just as it was and never really thought that there was a need for this. But even myself, somebody who thought that way, I think that this is a pretty game-changing feature. So even if you do like the Quad Cortex interface and working with building presets off of it, I think that you should definitely go and give a try to the Cortex Control desktop app. It's available for Mac, it's available for Windows. It works pretty great. There's of course some bugs, it's still in beta, but the great thing is that it's an open beta, so you don't have to sign up for anything. It's just available, you can download it straight away and get right to working. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely make sure that you drop a like down below, leave a comment. Do you like Cortex Control? Have you had any issues? Is uh, this a surprise for you that you actually like it? Or were you one of the people who absolutely hated the Quad Cortex because it didn't have this and now that it does, um, has that changed your opinion of the Quad Cortex? Definitely let me know down below and I will see you guys in the next video.